We're here at a Memorial Rose Garden where we're going to take this opportunity to tell you about the things that we used to enhance this space like water features and pots and uh, fencing material that ties in with the building. I think you'll find lots of opportunities to apply them to your own gardens and your own designs. If landscape design and landscape installation and specifics about both interest you, subscribe to our channel. I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation. This is Chip Valentino. This week's video, he's testing the shade and it's working very well here. We're here at this memorial garden on this warm August day where we had the challenge and opportunity to build a courtyard garden for entertaining and uh, for employee use adjacent to an existing about 10 year old building. If you look at the building, you'll see that it's a concrete tilt up building. You can see this fence behind me that we built. We attempted to make the enclosure which needed to be secure um, out of a material that would be, that would tie in nicely uh, with the building. So we did that with exposed concrete block and with a precast cap that ties into some of the same lines on the building. And then we took the opportunity to use some of the architectural features from the building and expand on them in this courtyard. So you can see these little pavilions for shade and for people to sit under. They will someday be filled with uh, tables that are um, on their way here and on order. These uh, pavilions tie in with the entry coverings at the front of the building and every place there's an entry and exit. To try to make it green and not arid and just full of concrete block walls and uh, pavilions, uh, we used large transplanted trees where we used a tree spade. We also used some interesting pots which might give you some ideas. In this garden, we've got a couple different styles of garden pots that were made specifically for this project. We bought them from Architectural Pottery. In this pot, you can see sitting right next to me, we planted a dwarf mandarin orange called Satsuma, Owari Satsuma, which is a real good kind of old fashioned one that doesn't have seeds, peels very easily. It's kind of small right now, but it'll fill up this pot over time. And with pots in a new garden like this, we take the opportunity to run a drainage system underneath so when you water it, you don't get any stain of water. The water goes, as it drains through the pot, it goes right into the drainage system, which is underneath this concrete. And we seal it in a way, kind of like setting a toilet where that water can't get out. We've watered this with drip irrigation. And as you can see, there's a tall pot here uh, a coffee color and then uh, in a different part of the courtyard we used a smaller uh, more round where we used bald uh, boxwood so boxwood pruned into balls and uh, that's the extent of the pots here but as you're probably aware there's a wide range of pots available architectural pottery is a good source to get lots of interesting ideas So the benches at this site that we use are from Keystone Ridge Design. They're really a heavy duty bench. We have two styles. The one I'm sitting on has a back and it's between uh, the two pots and right up against uh, the concrete block wall. Then in some little tighter spaces, we used one called a reading bench that doesn't have a back, but a similar design. These are very heavy duty, uh, high quality benches made out of iron. They're built in a way that we can anchor them uh, to the concrete. In this case, the owners have decided just temporarily we've set them in place and then they're going to decide if they want us to anchor them into the concrete permanently. At this site, we use Keystone Ridge and then we've recommended to the owners and I believe they have on order more Keystone Ridge furniture that will be used as the tables and the chairs. You can see there's a broad expanse under these pavilions that's open right now and those will have tables for employees to sit at and have special events here. We're big believers in designing courtyards to work in benches or seating areas but because what we're trying to do is really expand the inside into the outside and make the outside a usable space and in front courtyards we have a prior video that discusses this idea of using 
front gardens for more than just walking through to get to the front door. That's an important piece of advice that uh, we all should heed. We use uh, very simple paving that isn't expensive, actually one of the uh, least expensive options, which is uh, plain concrete in one case with colored concrete in another area. Most of it is uh, plain gray concrete with score joints. If you look closely at these score joints, you can see one of the main purposes of score joints, in addition to being decorative, is you direct all the cracks to those spots. So look into these score joints and you'll see there's a crack all along it. One of the things that we do at the end of the project that you might consider, uh, you know, you put the concrete in fairly early on and then you walk all over it and kind of beat it up and scuff it up. And one thing that we do that we've done here and you can see the effect of it is use a sealer. Now, if you go to Las Vegas and you look at stamped concrete in Las Vegas, you see they use a really, really glossy sealer that makes it look, I don't know, a little bit overly shiny to my taste and a little bit fake. And what we try to do is use a less intense one that gives it a little bit of sheen, uh, but not really, really shiny. Uh, we use a product called Glaze and Seal. The Glaze and Seal is available in different sheens. If you do it once a year, you can maintain that look and it never gets real old and tired looking. Particularly effective, I found in colored concrete. If you notice, whenever you put in colored concrete over time, that color really fades and sometimes uh, becomes even difficult to discern. Uh, you can't even tell you have a color. If you use glaze and seal or other good quality sealer, um, it restores that color and maintains that color over time. So the colored concrete looks like colored concrete all through its life. So another neat thing to work into your courtyard space is some kind of water feature, particularly if you're in a hot summer area that gives kind of a refreshing look and sound. In this case, we did kind of a creative thing in that we built it into this a concrete block wall that I'm sitting in front of and we made the water actually bubble over the wall and then we used the same cap and so it looks like it's part of the wall and it cascades down the face of the wall neat when it's lit up, lit up at night and is pretty much on all the time during the daytime when you come out of the building you immediately see the grandiflora Queen Elizabeth roses and then right behind that is this water feature. So it's kind of the first thing and the theme of the garden when looking from the building. Courtyards are useful and can make your life better and can make your garden better and more useful. If anything inspired you or you want to know anything in more detail, let us know in the comments below. On every project, including this project, we did an extra dose of our blend and penetrate liquid biotiller, and that's key in enlivening this soil. If you're interested in those products, go to our website, johnandbobs.com. So last week's plant was a great plant that I started using a couple years ago and is pretty unique. It's called Ruselia. St. Elmo's Fire blooms like crazy the whole season that it's warm. This week's plant is a small blooming plant that's interesting. Not as hard as some of the others, but I think you might know it. Please weigh in on it if you do and you're one of the first five people that answers correctly. We will send you some Penetrate Liquid Biotiller which we used around it in this garden. Submit your answer by clicking the link in the comments. If you like this idea of residential courtyards, we have another video that addresses that. 